Hey, hello there, back again, Angry Watchman. Um, I would like to say this um, at this point. I'm sorry I don't really bring out too many uh, videos at the moment. There are some time constraints and many other things. And to be perfectly honest with you, I think I'm really losing my interest in arguing about Flat Earth. It was really fun at first. But I seem to feel, I feel like that I'm constantly repeating myself, you know, and, um, and they, you know, they just, they just don't listen. And my time on Twitter has showed just how little flat earthers know and how little flat earthers care and how unwilling they are to listen and understand. And it's not the fact that they don't understand or can't understand, it's the fact that they just don't want to understand. It's just easy to just dismiss something that you don't understand. You fear something that you don't understand. Simple as that. And also, there are so many awesome YouTubers out there that do a million times better than me. You know, they have far more subscriber numbers, uh, put out far better numbers, uh, or viewer, you know, viewing numbers, and the content they put out is so much better. You know, like Simon Dan, um, Blue Skeptic, there's uh, Cool Hard Logic, Red's Rhetoric, Flight the Fa Fight the Flat Earth, Greater Sapien, uh, poof, there's probably a few others. Oh, and Conspiracy Cats, don't, don't forget about that dude. Um, and there's a few others. There is a, another Welsh chap who uh, doesn't fly earth, I can't remember his name at the moment, but. Um, He's got an, um, an awesome set of videos. Now, um, to get into this now, like I looked at D Marbles, quote unquote, activism uh, videos. And I was like, oh, they've made stuff like this. And I literally just by chance, I typed in flat earth activism banners. And there's a website that you could go to called Flat Earth 101 that you can buy these things off them. You can buy this shit. What the hell? Look at them. And as I'm going to go through here now, and you can see I've got tabs ready. Look at all those tabs. Um, but ready to show a fair few of these things. And I'm going to go through each banner. Um, obviously, I will point out everything and won't. Like I said, if, it, if one thing's on this banner, I'll talk to it, talk about it in detail, but if it's on this one, I'll um, just gloss over it and skip on to the next thing. Um, but just, I mean, look at these, right? This thing, Research Flat Earth Banner, I think this is one foot by three feet, right? Let's have a look. So this is, this is 12 inches by 36 inches. Look at the cost, $13. I know printing isn't that cheap. Uh, the one that D Marble uses in his activism uh, videos. Let's have a look. $69. That's a smug ass face. And again, full of shit that's been explained to him and debunked countless times. Or hell, isn't even proof. You know, and just. Just the stuff that's printed on here. I mean, good grief. And this this, this is the trouble. They're going after people. We, I, I like the fact that, oh, globers, the people who believe the Earth is globe. The people they go after are the people that just don't think about the shape of the Earth on a daily basis. You know, they go by doing their work, and then they come across these dudes and go, oh, and, you know, these people might get a bit interested. And the only trouble is, is that I know for a fact when they meet flat earthers like this, like Eric Dubay or D Marble or Jaronism, as they go around, is that they will give out um, web details to their websites and they'll watch flat earther videos. It, it nearly happened to me, right? I The first time I became... Um, intrigued with Flat Earth was when I watched um, an Armoured Skeptic video. It seems like years ago now. And I watched the Armoured Skeptic video where he tore apart a Jeronism video. And that was the first time I ever knew that Flat Earth existed. And I was literally, at first, I was like, Jesus Christ, how the hell? 
No, they, no, they can't be serious. And then I did the wrong thing. I went out and watched Flat Earth videos done by Flat Earthers. And the more and more I started to watch them, the more I went, oh, Jesus, this is uh, a bit weird. Okay, and I started to believe, not believe this shit, but I started to doubt myself. I go, Jesus Christ, they might have a point here. To the which point it started to affect me quite badly. You know, I, I was, it pretty much took over precedence of most stuff I was usually thinking about at the time. Until I then started watching science videos, and I watched videos from NASA. I know that's one of those things, you know, but, uh, you know, and I tried to look. And then, but then I started looking for the evidence myself. And when I started looking for the evidence myself, rather than believing what a flat earther told me on YouTube, the more ridiculous it became. And as time went on, the more and more and more horrendously idiotic that all their so-called evidence actually was. And how they pick and choose, and the cherry pick their evidence. And this, this thing is full of this. I mean, hugely full of this. All these things. Right? So I'm going to go through one of these quick by quick over and unfortunately some of these things I don't think I'll be able to find but ah well but let's go off this first one and you can clearly tell where it's gonna start off right they lie to you banner two feet by five feet by Marilyn spirit level so he's called himself spirit level okay and one guy actually pointed out it is actually quite ironic that uh, Daryl's surname is marble you can't write this stuff, can you? Right. Earth is flat. They lied to you. Um. Why is the D left out? Why is the word lie, so L-I-E in red, but not the D? You do realise that the word lied is a word. Uh, that doesn't make any sense. Oh well. Um. Right. Again, with this look, Gleason's flat earth map. No, it wasn't a flat earth map. And even if the, I'm not sure if Gleason did believe the earth is flat, I'm not quite sure. But even if he did, this is literally just a projection of the globe. That's it, simple as. And now, like, again, they've brought up all this stuff, like, oh, you know, it was um, the. Um, it's part of the UN flag, United Nations flag, right? Which means nothing. It's a design choice. Like this map was created in the 1800s, if I'm not mistaken. And let's go to a list of flat earth projections. So what they could have used. Now what they, the criteria was that they wanted an image that had um, all the continents or every single bit of land mass barring from Antarctica in some senses, um, visible at the same time, because they can't put one country on there, otherwise that may show favouritism, and then political hell ensues. You know, if they put America there, oh, you favoured in America over everyone else, and Russia won't be happy, Europe won't be happy, blah, blah. So they've got, they've got this one, the, um, you know, the um, famous roadmap sort of thing. You know, as we all like to use, the Mercator map. Which, for some reason, every time they seem to use, um, when Flat Earthers try and talk about flight paths, they use this one. And then compare it to the Flat Earth one. Which makes no sense. I mean, really. <laughs> it's laughable. Basically, they'll use this one, they'll paint on a um, flight path and go, this doesn't work on a globe. This isn't the globe! Right, like, which one are they going to use out of all of these? Some of these look cool, but they really don't make much sense. So, here's very ones that are similar to the Mercator map. Uh, these, some of these are batshit crazy. Like that one. Oh yeah, you know, let's have this part of the UN logo, shall we? Now, this one, essentially is a globe that's been cut and then folded out in different shapes which is why the Gleason's map looks the way it does and I will explain that in a second and like oh like this one would be cool but again everything's all squished it's a bit indistinguishable looks cool I have to admit 
uh, this one and all this kind of thing. And they, you know, they go down to the crazy like let's say conic. These are just types of things. There's Lambert, conformal conic, equidistant conic, uh, Bonnet. Look at that one. Shape of a heart. Uh, funky stuff. There we go. There's the azimuthal equidistant. Yes, that's another type of azimuthal. 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 Essentially, that's just one half of the globe. Which is my point, which is why they didn't really want to use, like, which one could they have used? There was one here somewhere, which I know they could have used in terms of... They could have used this one. Uh, let's say, like, had the logo a bit different, perhaps. But, it, you know, they wanted it a little different. So, uh, that, to me, looks like probably some sort of different type of Batman symbol. <laughs> That's pretty cool, actually. Paint that in black, give it a bit of extra little design decals, and you've got a new Batman logo right there. I, I want to paint that shit right now. Um, let's go back. Uh, that, can you imagine them using this one as part of the logo? <laughs> Good grief. You know, and like I said, this one shows how projections are sometimes made and how they're put together. See? You know what I mean? Right? I think this one, they could have used this one, I suppose, but no, bits are cut off. You know, it's it's not really a good design choice. Right, and then, you know, there we go. We're back to the azimuth equidistant. You know, it's got all the land mass here. It's all visible. Looks tidy. It's a nice, neat circle, which you can really work off as a, um, from a design point straight away. Right? Like I said, the distances from the center point to the edges are remain the same hasn't changed what has changed is the distances on these lines because you know to make this a complete circle they would have had to add it in and they can't just add in C otherwise the distances are all screwed up so they had to stretch these so the further south you go the more stretched it is which is why Australia is ridiculously long so is South Africa um, South America and all these kind of places so yeah, that's literally the only reason why they, why, why they would do this. There's no conspiracy involved, it's just a design choice. Right, where is the curvature? Well, we're too small to see it. Is that... That's the city landscape, yes, that's... You know, the Mirage thing that I've been using thanks to... Um, oh, mine's gone blank. Uh, refraction, and all this kind of thing. And yes, the Antarctic Ice Wall. Off limits since 1945, false. And even if it wasn't, yes, Antarctica sometimes likes to go down into wind chill factors of minus 122. Let me say that again. Minus 122. And it can get colder. I mean, you're talking about moments where it'll get to minus 80 without the wind. That's insane. So let's put it this way. It's not exactly your normal holiday destination, is it? It's not safe. And the government and, you know, people in power would can't really let you within their own mind and they, you know, unless they somehow have some sort of guilty conscience, allow you to go there unaided and unsupervised. Do you know, like, geez, if people were allowed to walk around Antarctica as much as they liked, do you, could you imagine how many people would probably die? How many people would go missing? People get lost and die occasionally when they go to Alaska, for crying out loud. This is Antarctica, where the entire continent, more or less, is the same thing. It's just sheer just snow and ice and very cold. So yes, it's very unsafe. And like I said, giving me these pictures is proof of nothing. These pictures don't prove that the ice wall encompasses us like this map suggests. I can show you a picture of the White Cliffs of Dover. That doesn't mean the White Cliffs of Dover encompasses all of the UK all the way around. Right? You know, it's just one of those things. Right. Um, 8 inches per mile squared. No, nope, no one uses 8 inches per mile squared. Uh, level. Level doesn't mean flat. So enough of that one, please. Um, is the Earth a ball or a plane? Well, it's not a plane. It's not technically a ball, but you know what I mean. Whatever. And... The only thing is with this sort of experiment here, this experiment has the light source pretty much at the same level as the ground. That doesn't make any sense. 
That's not how it is, even if the Earth was flat. You know, um, well, this isn't proof of flat Earth. This is you just trying to explain where the Sun and Moon go in their orbits or whatever. Which, again, you have no proof of the forces that exist that allow it to do that. We have gravity, you apparently have magic. So, blah. And this one, again, this one keeps on cropping up, even though this has been explained to Flat Earthers. And this is the thing, see, I'm still seeing Flat Earthers... Um, oh, God, it's going to be a long video, isn't it? Um, I'm still explaining... I'm still seeing Flat Earthers on Twitter post this shit. You know, when they always you knew you uh, Twitter people, you know, they've only got a couple hundred followers or 40 followers or 10 followers, which is brings me into question that they could be just trolls just to piss people off. You know, um, like Logan Paul, for example, because that guy's not serious. He can't be. And um, I'm still seeing it. Now, they say, like, oh, how big's America? Right? Uh, where did I put that picture? Ah, there we go. This proves the point, right? One's a zoom, so you zoom in. This one has the camera physically this close. So that's at a distance and zoomed in. This one's a little closer and zoomed in. This one is literally right next to the globe. And look how the difference is in size, you know? So I'll go back to this one, see? And this one, I would like to point out, I think both of these were done differently. This is, as you can clearly tell by some of the lines, this was done by um, scans of a orbiting satellite. This one was done by scans of an orbiting satellite that was a little bit lower, a bit closer, which is why they look like that. So again, it's just one of those things. It's hilarious how you need to keep on explaining this to people. You know, here's another example. That's another example. You know, it's it, this this shit's so easy to find out, and yet they're not bothered. They're just not bothered. And again, see, this is one of those aspects, right? So they see this. This is, I know it's the ISS, but just follow it for a second. So if they went further out, this line, this terminator line here, would move further up, so they'll see more. It's just how Google Map, it's it's how the Earth works, it's how geometry works. Just think about it. It would be nice. Fake Earth. Eh, no, it's not. Uh, right, let's back to the things. Um, Star Trails reality. Yeah, we know we can film them. Infinite space reality. Uh, no. This image was created by a DJ just to look pretty. This isn't an accurate representation of the movements and rotations of the galaxy and the solar system. It just isn't. Learn a bit of astronomy, please, before you start to do stuff like this. Right. Let's go on to the main one, which I think I've already pulled. Like, I think I'll probably skip this one, because I think this one is exactly the same as this one. Right, so I'll go on to this one. Again, he's got the America thing out there. Um, which has been explained to him so many times. Uh, this one here is the Blue Marble Project, which literally, Flatards, if you just type into Google the Blue Marble Project NASA, it will link you to a page that explains to you how the goddamn thing was made and how it was created. No, same thing, obviously. Um, and, you know, where the data was from and how it worked and how the process of, you know, assembly. Seriously, uh, what colour is Africa? Um, learn, like, trust me, the satellites, D, are not like just point-and-click cameras, which is where the misconception, I think, lies. Is that flat earthers seem to think that these satellites are just like point-and-click. Oh, just point at the Earth, click. Point at the Earth, click. No, it takes loads of different slow sort of photos, um, sort of images, with different wavelengths of light, and then pieces all those together to create the photo. So things will look a little different. And, you know, some satellites require different sort of information than another. So things will look different. Different wavelengths of light mean sort of different colour uh, outcomes. It's 
just how it works. Right, again, uh, exactly the same. Who gives a fucking shit? Excuse my language, I do apologise. But who, who gives a shit? I mean, really. I've been over this. This map existed before the UN logo. And they use this as a representation of the world. I guarantee you, if you people... What's quite funny is that you always claim that the world is throwing it in your face. Oh, look, they've got a globe here. Oh, the Universal Studios has got a globe as a logo. If the UN had a globe as its logo, you'd say that they were throwing it in your face. So, that... Again, it's just hypocrisy 101. Right, uh, this one. Sun circles above the Earth. That picture doesn't show that, but ah well. Um, June the 21st, 2018, 1am. The sun is visible over the Middle East from Alaska. Well, as you can clearly tell, even from this pic picture, which is a Mercator map, that Alaska is in sunlight. So, what the hell? What are you trying to prove? Even though that's not technically the Middle East, that's still Africa, but never mind. Um, let's go to thing, right? So, here we go. There's Alaska. Here's where the sun is. So the sun, I think, was pictured over Egypt and Sudan. Okay, so let's zoom out, zoom out. There's Alaska, I can see the red outline. And I can still see the red outline just there. I can probably move that a little bit more, because I can still see the water. There, look, see? So there, there, there. Still see Alaska. It's right there. And there's Egypt and Sudan. Zoom out. No, I can't anymore, but I will. And there we go, look. You can see on a globe that you'd be able to see. So when the sun is here, basically we're uh, screen side, only much really, 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 really far away, it's quite obvious that you'd be able to see it. So I really don't understand where um, where he's coming from with this. Again, even if I go back a little more time, I could still see Alaska. Still see Alaska. I can still see some of the red lines. You know, I can probably still see Alaska from here. I can still see some of the red line. There we go. And, uh, oh, by the way, here's some of that proof of that America looks bigger. Yeah, see? Look how big America looks now. You know? Right, so let's bring the whole thing. And zoom out. Look how much smaller it's getting. Big. Huge. Small. Huge. Small. Huge. Small. Huge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, having too much fun. Sorry. Again. Okay, let's move on to something else from here. Uh, gravity is density and buoyancy. Yes, but density and buoyancy exist thanks to gravity. Just ex just explain you that density and buoyancy exist does not disprove gravity. And yes, I do think the fact that we live under that apparently we could live under a snow globe as a bit nuts. Buoyancy and density are not theories. Well, neither is gravity. So, meh. Up yours, D. You need to understand what flat earthers seem to think that gravity is is just this mag. It's, it, like it works like magnetism. You know, it just pulls and pushes. No, it's a little different than that. Um, understand perspective on a flat Earth. Vanishing point, yes. But that still doesn't explain... Um, that still do doesn't explain the uh, the fact that the sun doesn't change angular size at all from morning until evening. Not even slightly. Not even slightly. And again... With this picture down here, 52 miles away, should should have over 1,800 feet of curvature of height in the tallest building completely. Um, even though that depending on the temperature of the day, different amounts of the city and the buildings are visible. So it's 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 a massive amount of refraction. It's it's funny. Flat Earthers love to use refraction and perspective only when it suits them. When it's used against them, they ignore it or dismiss it, which Dee Marble's done before. Which then brings me on to... Actually, I'll do this one first. The moon emits a cooling light. No, it doesn't. Because the simple fact of the matter is, this is in shade. Shade can occasionally, or potentially, trap quite a lot of heat. 
depending on the circumstances or uh, you know um, wind or many other aspects of what's going on around you shade can trap heat simple as that that's just how it works like for example a cloudy night can be warmer than a starry night with no clouds at all because the clouds trap heat it's just how it works so it's not the moon it just isn't right main the puget sound laser test we all know this one um this one now greater sapien has gone through this at many points um all the time now he's put some details down here like 10.3 miles away now i know his camera like the, i think the laser pointer was about seven feet about, about seven feet and it was about 10 10.3 uh, miles away and i think the camera that dmarps was probably about five feet maybe six feet so I'm going to go to the metabug thing. So let's just do five feet. So it's 38, 30 feet hidden, not 62. You know, um, let's go six feet. That's now 28 feet hidden, not 60, not 60 plus. Refraction makes a big difference. But here, again, as when refraction was used against him, he just laughs at it. Now, I want to talk about like beam divergence, right? So as the light ray goes out, the beam divergence will split. So the beam is not a constant tight beam that stays the same width, that stays the same width for miles on end. Okay. So basically, that the the cone width from the center point could be 20, 30, maybe even 40 feet. From the center so it's got like an 80 feet width especially how much it would probably diverge at the distance of 10 miles now what i mean by that is d marble could move he could be directly in front of this laser point right he could move about 20 30 feet to his left or right right now the laser hasn't moved it's still pointing where it is pointing right he could move 30 feet to his left or right, point his camera at the laser, and the laser will still look like it's pointing directly at his camera. That's just what beam divergence does. Now, think about that. Now, now we went on that this is like, you know, 30 feet hidden. Now, imagine the beam divergence going 30 feet upwards. So that means there's more light. There's more light that you can see. So what D Marble has done here, right, is that there could be four reasons why he got the results that he does so the earth is flat refraction um you know beam diversions and something else right but what he's done is he's decided to ignore three of them and only focus on one which is the earth it must be flat but you can't do that because the other three would probably negate the possibility or could sort of prove that the first one is wrong like, you know, without those three, you might not get the results that you do. Simple as. And again, more trivial bullshit about, oh, all water looks calm and everything, because, oh, a thousand mile an hour spin, ha oh, oh. even though it takes four minutes to the Earth to rotate one degree. All speed is relative. You know? All speed is relative. Then his, you know, his embarrassing... Um, spirit level experiment which this has been explained to them so many times um the gyroscope yeah we go back to the bob at globusters who got a laser guided gyroscope and actually provided evidence of the uh of the drift but then ignored it and for some reason nathan oakley is convinced that he's debunked it somehow even though he hasn't because that guy i'm sorry i I can't take Nathan Oakley seriously. Conspiracy cats, as in the video did before, conspiracy cats tore him a new one and just showed how limited he is and how unwilling he is to debate someone when it isn't under his rules. When he isn't in command of the mute button, he's it, he's a mess. He doesn't like it. He hates it. All right, moving on. Um, NASA budget, even though NASA's budget is minuscule to that of the military, and like, yeah, to so think that um, building rockets is supposed to be cheap or free, do you? Right, uh, NASA going sideways. No, it's just 
the trajectory. Rockets, what do you expect them to do? Go straight up and then to do a, like a handbrake 90 degree turn? No. Um, the chance reception, even though all of this has been explained, that um, twin brothers, twin brothers, well not twin brothers, just a, a brother I think, or siblings. Like, I'd like to stress, right, some of these guys, when you do really look closely, actually look nothing alike. These two guys look nothing alike. I mean, like, this guy's hairline is completely different. Um, these two black dudes here, um, they don't look um, very, they look very similar, but brothers, right? Um, these two look nothing alike. These two look nothing alike. These look to look kind of alike, but if you actually look at them, their mouth shape is different, and then his hairline's in a completely different place. These two guys actually don't look alike at all, their eyes are a different colour, all this kind of thing. And also, even if it was such a major deception, what was the deception for, exactly, if you know what I mean? And also, why would they allow these people to take positions that would allow them to have such major photographic opportunities that, that would put them in the public eye again. The Illuminati Freemasons wouldn't risk that, would they? They just really wouldn't. But yeah, if you want this shitty banner that is just full of lies and full of deception itself, then um, you have to pay about $70. Yes, I'm definitely going to pay that, aren't I? Right, what's next? Uh, this one looks like it's pretty much the same. Let's have a look. South, 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 south. Uh, yes, which is the star trails. People looking this way, this way, this way can see the same southern star trails. And like, how does this make more sense? I can't fathom how people seem to think that this is more acceptable. Right, uh, ignore that one. No, 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 no. Right, let's pop onto this one. Oh, the horizons, the dog cam, which if you did actually fiddle with this picture in Photoshop and play with the exposure, actually shows that it does show a bit of curvature. Uh, sea level and eye level. Right, so they claim that it doesn't matter where you go, the altitude is always at eye level. Right, this proves that it doesn't. Right? This is, the angle is perfect, pretty much. Um, height, right? So it's looking straight out level and the horizon has clearly dropped. Right? What flat earthers do, right, I'm not sure they either do this intentionally, whether which they most probably are, is that centering Get, getting pictures of her, of horizons at different altitudes, then then centering the picture is not proof of the horizon rises to eye level. You know, uh, this again, but over that, no one uses eight inches per square miles. Eight inches per mile squared was only ever used as an approximation over a very short distance. Done. Um, been over this, not talking about that. The sun is close. Or is it? So that points to the sun. Where's my crepuscular rays picture? This one. Now there we go. Look, oh look, the sun is uh, directly above the cloud. Uh, the, the trees look. Oh, hot spot. That must, that means it must be close. You know, so many different like you know things of this. See, there we go. Roughly two thousand meters. So he honestly thinks that the sun. Is just 2,000 meters high. Wow. You know, and you can type in what you want. I mean, like, so these are the ones just the trees, so the sun must be just above the trees. Let's go crepuscular rays caves. Oh, look, so look at this. Look at that. This shows that all light rays are parallel. Right? They are parallel, but it's your perspective on how small you are that turns it into that. See? All parallel. 
Wow, I can't believe I actually came across these beauties of pictures. Wow. Look at that. You know, so these pictures, oh look, so this proves that it's just above the water here. You know, oh look, the sunlight to follow this up must be just above the, above, you know, outside the cave. Outside the cave door. It's unreal, this shit, honestly. Now, um, this one, yeah, planes don't need to do that. Oh, those flight paths do not exist. Um, so, that doesn't prove anything. Agents Persuade Mile, no one uses that. The Gleason's map, blah, blah, blah. Oh, look, it's Eric Dubay. Wow. Um, what else? Now, this one here, I saw this earlier, made me laugh. Now, let's give a read of this. I'm not sure if anyone can read it. Time lapse photography of the North Pole Star Polaris in. What's I say? I can't read that. Is that the date? Is that in December or something? Um, no existing pictures of such in the South. So he thinks that. Because um, Eric Dubay actually, I think, has been said, caught saying many times, that he says that the Southern Tar Star Trails don't exist. Uh, well, I've got a few words for you. Southern Star Trail photo, Southern Star Trail photo, Southern Celestial Pole photos, Southern Celestial Pole photos, Southern Celestial Pole photos, Southern Celestial Pole photos, Southern Celestial Pole. That's Polaris, but Polaris, that's not actually where Polaris is. I guarantee you that, because um, Polaris does move, has a circular path in the sky itself. It's unreal that Flat Earthers are so unwilling to do like proper research. It's just... Blows my mind, it really does. Here we go, so here's the closest bit. Still 100% flat, even though if you just... But look at that! Look how much has dropped there! Look. You can see that where my mouse is? Look how much has dropped! So I'm going to skip now. No, that's not what they teach you. Space is fake. NASA trains its astronauts in a pool. Coincidentally, in May, NASA spacewalk, there are videos of bubbles are visible. Um, no. Because did any thought go into anything that they could have been first? Because I would like to say some of those bubbles are going left, some are going right, some are going away from the camera, some are going up, some are going down. It's not how bubbles act. Never. Again, level water. Level doesn't mean flat, but never mind. Earth is flat, question mark. You've been brainwashed to not investigate. Bullshit. If that was the case, they wouldn't allow people to become astronomers. Astron astronomers would be like high priests. You know what I mean, from the Egyptian era. Only they would be allowed to study the stars, which is not the case. You can do it yourself. Again, let's have a look at one like this. Flat Earth proofs. Uh, that's been doctored. I know that much. Airplane dips its nose. Doesn't need to, thanks to gravity and potential energy and all this kind of stuff. Look it up. Um, I don't think so. The law of perspective greatly limits our ability to see far distances. Are we to believe that 20 miles away we can make the features of the face of the moon? Yes, it's because the moon is, what's the word? Very big. It's huge. And you're probably only seeing certain details. If you were closer, you'd probably see even more greater detail. Water finds itself. Well, again, it doesn't mean anything. Impossible. Like again, I said, thanks to refraction and different temperature of the day, different parts of this city are visible. Let's have a look. Hundreds of flights every day make fuel stops that make no sense on a globe. Even though that's... See, I told you earlier, that's a fucking... I'm sorry, I need to stop swearing. That's a Makita map for crying out loud. As lit as we've literally 
just been through. It's not the globe. And yes, it's just where land masses happen to be. What do you want to do? Build some sort of runway in the middle of the ocean? Jet streams. I think this one makes more sense. Personally. Because jet streams don't go in a perfect circle like that. And I'm not quite sure which one's accurate or what that is trying to depict. I'm not entirely sure. Corpuscular rays, been over that already. Boats, yes, what that's done first is is gone is basically gone too far for the ang it's it's angular size is too small for your eyes to see. That that's all that's happened. Wait a little longer and it will go behind the curve. But they don't like to do that. They, they don't like to wait. NASA fails space. NASA trains its astronauts in a pool. Coincidentally, many NASA space operators' bubbles are visible moving through space during the pool. NASA. Um, no, I haven't seen a single bubble. NASA has been caught time and time again faking space from stop motion animation. No, it hasn't. The blue green screen. No, it hasn't. To bad Photoshop to counter CGI plans and images. No, they haven't. Just not. I haven't seen one credible piece of evidence from you, from flat earthers at all, that planets are um, CGI. Not one. Like this one, for example. This is where I lose my patience with flat earthers. This photo is quite clearly was faked by a flat earther. Right here we go. This is the original one. So what some what a flat earther has done here. Which loads of flat earthers have basically just got have uh, just gone with, right? Is he's taken this fid he's taken this picture, added to it, and then stuck an earth in there. So, oh look, it's Photoshop, blah blah. And flat earthers fell for it, and they still re and they still repost this shit, right? Again with this, they some people are still saying, and I'm still seeing this over Twitter, that that's a blue screen, right? Which, where is it? See, here's a picture of him using it. This is a picture of him using it again. And there's a picture of using it again. There's a picture of another astronaut using it. It's a measuring grid. That's, that's just all it is. It's a measuring grid. It's, how easy is this shit to find out? I mean, really. Right, again. Uh, NASA's budget, 50, 52 million a day, and all we get is lots of CGI. Prove that it's CGI, please. I, I haven't seen a single bit of proof that that's CGI, or this one, or this one. Now, let me just go to over here, right? Here's an amateur astronomer's picture of Mars. And here's an amateur astronomer's photo of um, Saturn. It's. You see why I have a problem with these people? They're, the amount of, you know, their research is so selective. So nobody in human history, as far as I know, has thought the world was fat, flat. Um, this was a little thing, right? The Egyptian one. I don't understand why they seem to think that's. Flat. This was again. These are just artist renditions. I don't really understand. Except every single culture and religion prior to NASA, you do realise that the Earth being a sphere predates NASA. I mean, going back nearly two and a half thousand years is when the globe was first theorised. I don't understand why that's so hard to explain. Look, so the Hindu, they literally thought that they were living on top of a, and I would like to point out, that's got a curved Earth on it, I would like to point out, uh, lives on the back of a turtle, do they? And uh, the Norse believed that they lived on top of a tree. Okay. 
but yeah. So yes, if you want this, you know, um, vinyl banner in semi-gloss finish, sixty-nine dollars. What's this? Let's have a look how much some of these other ones are. Are you a flat earth? Oh, sorry, big yawn there. Are you a flat earth graduate? Click here. Wow, and here's some more. Oh, look who it is. It's my favourite dude, Pastor Ernest, or Brother Ernest. Oh, flat earth fucker. The guy who doesn't listen at all. All, the, all of these people are just insane. Him, he's the religious nut job that decides to rip apart science books. How dare you? How dare you take a Jack Daniels um, livery and use it for glow? Ooh, I want to find you. You better run, sunshine. Again with this rubbish. And I don't really have time for this sort of thing. I have to go through. It's just the same old, same old, same old, same old, same old. Oh, look, it's him. Anthony Riley. Mr. I like the fact that during that time, the conspiracy cats owned Nathan. I do like the fact that even Anthony Riley just literally sat there and was smiling. He was, I think he was struggling not to laugh. Because he knew that Nathan was there getting his ass handed to. Hugely so. Globe Lies UK Tour. Oh, these two douchebags. Who are these guys? Is there a link to these? Let's see if I can uh, find a way. Now, uh, find some sort of link on there. Right, um, I think that's about it for now. I don't really think I need to go... Um, much further. Pretty boring video. Oh, pardon me. Um, I've gone over this about a million times. And I'm really sick of repeating myself in most videos. Basically, all I want with people like this, like people like, you know, Nathan Thompson, who's, another, I think, another religious guy. Uh, well, religious flat earther, so he won't listen. Uh, along with many others, I'd like to talk to these myself. And really have a really good well, argument, and just rip into him, essentially. Because none of this shit is any sort of credible. But yeah, that's it. Um, I hope all of you are having a lovely day, and I hope you're back again soon. If there's any sort of different type of videos that you want me to do, um, uh, please comment down below. I was going to go into some movie-based stuff, like I want to explain about Captain Marvel, maybe, and... The whole shitstorm with Brie Larson and how that movie became a joke from start to finish. And how, you know, the whole... When people's criticism, actual people's legitimate criticisms got lost. Got lost for ages. But, you know, we'll see. I'll see how it goes. That's something I'll either keep to myself or if you want me to talk about it, please comment down below. Uh, this has been Angry Welshman. I hope to see you again. Have a nice day.